everyone has some idea of what their ideal life looks like. Whether it means affording to travel freely, coming home to a loving family, or having all the cats and dogs in the world. But things are getting harder by the second. It can be nearly impossible just getting out of bed in the morning. Why is it so much easier giving into negativity than it is to get out of it? Depression doesn't just weigh down our shoulders. It lies, often telling us that we're not in control of our lives, but we are. Whatever you're going through, know it's not always going to be like this. Here are eight tips for dealing with suicidal thoughts. One, don't spend the night alone. When you're suicidal, it will be tempting to isolate yourself. Do you lock yourself in your room, shut the blinds, and hide underneath your covers? The thing about depression is that the darkness will welcome you, but this only makes you susceptible to believe your negative thoughts. Watch out for your safety and don't spend the night alone. Call up your family, friends, or lover. Tell them how you're feeling. If possible, sleeping over at their place is even better. Having company around can do wonders for you because it means keeping those bad thoughts at bay or allowing the new environment to boost your mood. Two. Cut off all ties with toxic people. Research shows that keeping toxic people in your life isn't just stressful, it can actually kill you. One study showed that subjects in negative relationships had a higher risk of developing cardiac problems. If someone is abusing you physically or emotionally, please call the police for help. Your life might drastically change if your family members or partner are the toxic ones, but realize that they're putting you in more pain than they are supporting you. 3. Make a list of your accomplishments. Hey you, yeah you, look at how far you've come. Failure can seem like a big slap in the face, but we often obsess over perfection instead of focusing on what we've achieved. There's a difference. Striving for perfection doesn't allow you to be human. Embrace your flaws, failures, and downfalls as much as you appreciate all the milestones you've reached. Listen closely to what isn't working. Turn those into lessons and grow resilient. 4. Practice positive mantras. These are otherwise known as coping statements. Ending your life will seem like the only option to end your misery, but nothing lasts forever. Practice saying some of these. I will get through this. This is my depression talking, not me. I don't really want to die. I just want the pain to end. Stick these to your mirror, fridge, and carry them wherever you go. Let them be friendly reminders to be kind to yourself. You got this. 5. Find a therapist. Most people shrug this idea off because they might not be able to afford it. But there are options, especially if you're a student. An open mind is what will ultimately get you help. Call your insurance company for any insights they might have. It never hurts to ask your family doctor, too. Networks exist for a reason, and the more professional advice you receive, the faster you can find and work with a professional. 6. If it's urgent, please call the police. This won't necessarily stop your suicidal thoughts, but they will stop you from going through with the act. From here on out, they can take you to the ER where you'll be safe. We hope you never have to resort to this, but want to remind you that help is only one call away. 7. Find out what's hurting you and make changes to it. Do you feel stuck at your dead-end job, tired of the city you're living in, or not sure about what you're studying in school? It's okay to address that you're feeling unhappy, but don't succumb to helplessness. It may take time to find what works for you, but this is why practicing patience is so pivotal. Big projects seem intimidating, but break them up into smaller tasks to make them more approachable. Remember, as you wait for your miracle, never stop working on yourself in the meantime. 8. Whatever you do, please don't lose hope. I know it's easier said than done, but committing suicide will end everything including the amazing days ahead that you won't be alive for. People usually realize too late, while they're in the middle of the act, that every problem they ever faced could have been fixed. So please reconsider your health. You deserve so much more. What do you do to keep going or stay inspired? We want you to know that you're not alone and we're sending our best wishes your way. For more helpful content, be sure to also subscribe to our channel. Thank you as always for watching. Hey guys, it's Yumi, one of the partners of Psych2Go. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about Bell Let's Talk, a mental health initiative that aims to raise awareness. Every year, Bell is dedicated to moving mental health forward in Canada. Bell Let's Talk promotes awareness and action with a strategy built on four key pillars, 
fighting the stigma, improving access to care, supporting world-class research, and leading by example in workplace mental health. Psych2Go being based in Canada, we can't help but want to participate along. As Ellen DeGeneres puts it, what the world needs more of is kindness and better mental health. What Psych2Go wants to do is to encourage everyone to be a part of this movement by commenting below with the time when you first open up and struggle with mental health. We will pick five commenters and they will receive one of our digital magazines. Don't forget to hashtag Bell Less Talk and hashtag Psych2Go. We can't wait to hear from you.